call was that? What's that called here? Oh, I remember what it's called. It's called Midnight Smooches. Yeah. Last week's. Midnight Smooches. Yeah. Oh. It's great that. Can I have a smell? Yes, you can. I just, I just put a label on it because you know what? I, the, the rule number two. Always right label th everything. Yeah, right. I think that I forgot to write it down. Yeah. I'll just write it down. How's the tea going? It's good. I sort of feel like I should probably take this out now. I might have steeped enough for everyone a... who's fly on the walling right now. I'm drinking some very nice green tea. Yes, King's something rather. Um... King's, King's, uh, King's green tea. Do you know what? I might just put this. Put it in. Yeah. Uh, I might just put this on top of that okay. edge of bit of plant pot there, and then make sure that I take it down and wash it. There we go. Okay. I was thinking because you know, I suppose most people who make films, they are in studios and they have a set temperature, and with ours, you can tell what the temperature is like according to whether or not I'm in a woolly. Yeah. Or not. I mean, we are very much in a studio. Yeah. Just not that kind of a... Yeah, the better kind. Okay, here you We're, go. We are in the better kind Midnight of studio. Midnight Smooches from last week's film. Oh, wow. It's all right, isn't it? Oh, it's really good. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's what it's like after a week, which is... A sort of the jasmine's popping. The jasmine really is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting, because I remember last week thinking oh you don't notice as much of the jasmine as I thought you would and now mm. it's like it's a very big jasmine hit and from this we learn that it's a really good idea to leave it before you decide it's finished yeah. and then come back to it because we genuinely when did we film no we filmed on Wednesday last week anyway yeah. it's been a few days and they will probably settle down again and then we'll come back in two weeks time and see what it smells like then Oh, it's so good. That's right. It is quite jasmine-y, but not in a bad way. No, but not in a bad way. However. Is it possible to be jasmine-y in a bad way? Yeah, I think so. See, see it can get just too much. Mm. It can be a bit too... A bit too in your face. And maybe not too jasmine-y for some people. Mm -hmm. But... I suppose um, everything is... For me, it's a, it's a, it's a bit like... Skirts being a bit too short, some people will go, oh, you can never have too short a skirt. Yeah. But on the other hand, you can go, yeah, another couple of centimetres on that, and you'd feel less uncomfortable. Than yes. You. <laughs> yes. I say that from a point of view of regard, but you, but you can understand why other people might go, no. Nope, I, shorter. personally, I never wear a skirt that's long, shorter than my knees. No, I think that's about It's right. because when I'm on an escalator in the tube, it means I can, you know. The escalators are the thing. That's yeah. why I would feel uncomfortable. Not because, um, yeah, it's just you just don't know what's going to happen next. And that's yeah. that's what happens when you put too much jasmine in a present. It's green tea, it's lovely. Good, good. Um, however, we're here to talk about almost the opposite of jasmine. We are talking about mint. Mint. Mint, because I was asked, would I make a film on mint? Oh, well, thank you, yes. I will, because you asked me, and that's... It's nice to be wanted. <laughs> um, we do requests. Yeah. Uh, well, so we have I have a variety of mints here, and things that I think go with mint, and a couple of fragrances that I made with mint mm -hmm. to show that it is this is not all theoretical. This is actually happening, and and they sell. Well, we should probably just start with the one that I completely forgotten to bring up here which is no I haven't it's here it is the Yakima peppermint which sounds as if it's from Japan it does but it's from the US and I've got this book downstairs an essential oils yearbook from 1929 and they're talking about Yakima peppermint starting to be grown in the US and I say, let's see, okay, I think I dipped a tiny amount on that strip, see a tiny amount? Mm -hmm. But then you look at the back of the strips and there's a lot. Oh. So that's why I was momentarily confused. Oh. Okay, so this is my favourite peppermint. And I'm currently trying to sneak it into mm. everything I make. 
Hmm. Is this in things that I that you've made that I would know? It is in. Is it? Wash me in the water. But I like that you sound surprised because this is the this is the clue to how to use peppermint. Smidges, <laughs> the yeah. smallest of smidges. Um, unless you actually want to make something that was is dominantly proper proper pepperminty, mm -hmm. and call it peppermint something or other. But um, we're having a discussion on citruses and somebody was saying how do you make citruses sparkle brightly like well they kind of already do mm. but one of the things is just a tiny bit of peppermint into your blend i wonder what it what i mean i wonder if you know this you may not um why it makes your nose feel cold oh yeah that's a different um uh sensation is well firstly it evaporates really really quickly right but also i'm pretty sure this one hits the trigeminal nerve which is the the thing which you, you get different feelings if something evaporates really quickly then it uses the energy from your own skin yeah to, this is really impressive. to blast itself off yeah but also um yeah the, the sensation of feeling cooling um in, in your trigeminal nerve receptors, like it's things like um, uh, uh, the fizzy bubbles, carbon dioxide in mm. um, fizzy drinks, mm -hmm. that stimulates the trigeminal nerve. Oh, uh, yeah. There are things in black pepper, spicy things, that that stimulate as well. I'm realising that I think I am trigeminal nerve motivated <laughs> in life. Yeah, Mr. Chili. Yeah, chilies. I like this. I love the smell mm. of mint, and then also, you know, I like to guzzle fizzy drinks fast so that you can have the odd, you know, beer burp. What? Which is not to do with the trigeminal nerve, but uh, you know, I, I, if you like guzzling fizzy drinks fast, that's fine too. Yeah, it's fresh. You... Mm. Wakes up the sinuses. So, when people have lost their sense of smell, mm -hmm. sometimes they think they're getting it back because they'll smell like pepper or mint or something, and think, oh no, I'm de definitely getting oh, something. That's interesting. But it's not the aroma, it's not that that's working, it's um, it's trigeminal nerve. It's very interesting, so it's it's almost like a, it's like a hidden weapon in a perfume, because you've got the smell, but it also, yep. if you can stimulate that nerve. It's the whole refreshing thing. And yeah. One of the reasons that we have to be careful using it in Europe is because Peppermint is toothpaste, toothpaste is peppermint. Yeah. Uh, mints, refreshing breath. Um, I got some toothpaste when I went to Japan, which was jasmine toothpaste. Wow. And then they do sort of licorice toothpaste and other things. All, all toothpaste does not have to be peppermint. So right. they, they, culturally, they see it differently. So you're, yeah, your toothpaste can be as unique as your perfume. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. They don't make quite so many variations. In fact, uh, I just got a jasmine one recently, in fact, in the UK. Wow. Um, so, I mean, why do we use it? it? It evaporates quickly. It doesn't last particularly long. So, I was about to say longly. It doesn't last longly. Um, and it, it is refreshing, but it is also a painkiller peppermint. It's something we can't put on the bottle. But... I use Our Modern Lives Blue that's got peppermint in it. Yeah. If I've got a headache, I just blast it on. Now, I can't say that as a marketing thing. You can't say anything about perfumes. You can't make medical claims about perfumes. All I can say is if I have a headache and I spray on the blue, it goes away. Why can't you say, why can't you make claims? You have to have, in order to make medical claims, you have to have done 10 years medical testing and have proof that one, it's safe, two, it's efficient, all of those things. Right. That's why, um, uh, you know, drugs companies, <laughs> uh, they put so much money into the launch of something, that's why they hope to get it back. So yeah. They can do another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, get before the patent expires, because you can't just say on a perfume bottle that it's, um, you can't say anything about anything being healing. 
even if the essential oils are known to, if you put lavender on a burn, it will get it better. It does, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It does work. But you can't say in a skin cream that lavender is healing. Because it's <clears throat> nobody is nobody's going to pay for 10 years clinical testing on lavender when everyone can use it because it's not patented. Right. Okay. I've got another one for you. Thank you. Very different. Yes. Wrigley's. Complete the sentence. What? Wrigley's. Spearmint gum. Yeah, it's spearmint. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you have it. You have it straight away. So, and they are very different. And because we tend to be familiar with different kinds of mint, because we chew them. Yeah. Either chew or swallow. We get. They're very different. And for me, the spearmint is. Hmm. The peppermint is. Hmm. Hmm. I, I find that spearmint smells sweeter to me. It's got less of that trigeminal nerve thing going on. Hmm. <laughs> That's indeed. Yeah. Yeah, so it's. it's I, I, I think I'm naturally drawn towards peppermint, I think. Or, well, the first one wasn't a peppermint, was it? It is. Oh, it's it's a the peppermint. Yukima peppermint. Right. It's a particular strain. No, not that kind of a strain. <laughs> um, the English language and words meaning the different, same words meaning different things, it can be such a problem. Mm. Um, no, we've got to be a bit careful not to burn out the mint receptors, they don't really. Oh, but, yeah. Um, but I'll give you this one. Sorry, to interrupt your tea slurping. That's alright. That's it, a slow leg. Why haven't I got tea kind of a look? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should have made two. Yeah, it's fine. This is very interesting. Yeah. I am smelling... There's quite a lot of lavender in it. And quite a lot of basil. Mm hmm So it's called... Mm hmm It's called bergamot mint. It's wow. called menta citrata, citrus mint. Mm. And what you are smelling is a lot of the same molecules that are in lavender and basil and other herbs. Wow. And so it is actually an essential oil taken from a mint. But I will, That's lovely. yes, it is, and I find it softer and a little bit more floral. I thought it, I thought it was widely available, and I used it in a formula for somebody, and then it's like, oh no, we can't get that. We'll just make it up after the component parts, and then yeah. mm. another conversation that I stumbled upon today on a forum was about aromatherapy, and about whether or not you can say something is an aromatherapy blend, which incidentally you can't, if you choose to use the, the same smells, the same aromas, but you make them up from aroma chemicals, isn't that exactly the same if aromatherapy, is, if aromatherapy says no, you've got to use the essential oils. Mm. Can't you just make the smell? And the answer is no, you can't. Because aromatherapy actually has nothing to do with the smell. No. It's to do with the active yeah. components of the essential oil. And what we don't know, and I think we will find out, and it's not, it's not oh, magic, it is chemistry and biology. Yeah. We will find out what all the other chemicals are yeah. in the essential oils that don't necessarily make the smell yeah. that are having another effect on you. Yeah. Because you can't take linalool and everything else that's in lavender and expect it to make your your burns better. Yeah. It's other things that are in lavender. So aromatherapy is not about smell. In fact, it was invented, aromatherapy, by a, um, by a chemist who was working on extracting uh, individual aroma chemicals from essential oils. And he burnt himself on a Bunsen burner. He plunged, there's the official description, he plunged his hand in the nearest vat of liquid and it was lavender essential oil. Wow. And to his astonishment, it stopped hurting and then it healed. Yeah. And he went, 
there's something going on here that we haven't realised. Yeah, totally. I'm sure. <laughs> and he, so that is Gat Fossi, he invented aromatherapy coming from a chemistry background, which is not what people think are quite, you know, an aromatherapist are qualified, they're proper, proper trained. Yeah, I mean, um, sort of, it, it, it often gets lumped into some other yeah. I mean, um, I, I, alternative yeah, medicines certainly. which I'm, I am to which I'm not averse some of them are a bit daft um, well yeah but, you know given that I come from a long tradition of witchcraft I'm, I'm up with that you know yeah well I'm down all, with the herbs also a placebo works even if you know it's a placebo true although I'm not sure it can fix your burns no that is true <laughs> I do have I have a bottle of lavender in the kitchen just to you know yeah. On well, hand. I put it into action when one day, in fact Valentine's Day, I was cooking a casserole, took it out it's of the oven. very romantic dish. Bobbly, 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 mm. hot, hot, spilled it all on my feet. <gasps> oh yeah. no. Bare feet. Oh no. Wasn't cool. Um, that was very hot. It was very hot. And I then, I ran them under the tap as you do, and then I put, I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. I've read this. I know the, <laughs> I know the studies. Poured lavender oil all over them. So. Yeah. 20 minutes later, they actually didn't hurt. And I was just looking at them going, how are you not hurt? Yeah, yeah, amazing. I had to keep putting it on. And in the normal circumstances, you don't put 100% lavender on your skin, but this is not normal. No. And uh, please, children, do not try this at home. But, okay, so this one. This, the, the, things are getting more and more interesting. We... Yeah. Well. Yeah, well, this is another interesting thing. Uh, what any any thoughts on this? One? It smells. It smells a lot more woody. It smells. Um, oh, the sun keeps coming in and out. Uh, it it smells. Um, it smells. It is reminding me of cedar. Mm -hmm. Cedar. Atlas. The pencil one. Is that the pencil one? That's Virginia. Ah, damn it! That's what I was getting so somewhere. Atlas is the. Um, the mountain lion up a tree. That's right. Yeah, it, yeah. So see previous film. <laughs> yeah. So it reminds me of it reminds me of pencils. Okay. It's a lot more woody. Yes, and this is called eucalyptus peppermint. Ah, oh, there we go. It smells but very eucalyptusy. Thing is, this is from a eucalyptus tree. So where the previous one, the bergamot mint, is a mint, mm -hmm. the eucalyptus mint. Is a eucalyptus. Wow, it's um, it's absolutely lovely. So, um, in terms of looking for making to looking to make a fragrance last a little bit longer, a minty one, you might consider using that. Um, is there a, is there a, a you know that, you know the eucalyptus smell that you smell when you enter a florist. Do you know that okay. smell? You when it's, it hits, well, it always hits me the minute smell. I walk into a florist. Yes, it's always the eucalyptus. It's the eucalyptus that I can smell. Ah. Does that? There, are, it, it, it's it's massive greenery, and there's quite a lot of cis three hexanol in a, uh, a florist. Yeah. It's always cutting the stems, and that stuff is yeah. leaping out at you. There was a um, very specific. I'm going to get some um, of the eucalyptus in question and bring mm. it to so let you smell because it's one of my favourite smells. In the world. Sometimes okay. you walk past a eucalyptus tree and smell it and go, ooh. There's, there's a couple of eucalyptus trees that people planted in gardens near us, forgetting that if you only got a six foot garden, the one day the tree will actually take over. Um, people don't think ahead, do they? No. Okay. So I'm going to give you wash me in the water to smell now that you your brain is awake mm -hmm. to the mintiness of this world because you can't that's his only tell. I can smell it now. Mm. There are many, many refreshing herbs yeah. in this fragrance because it made it sort of as a bit of a joke for a... No, I mean the fragrance isn't a joke. The fragrance I think is one of the nicest things I've ever made. But it's... And, and I can't call it a cure. But it's sort of hangover cure fragrance. Mm -hmm. It's something you could... Definitely wear on a Sunday morning. 
because you've promised to meet somebody, but you don't really want to get up and go out, but you could wear this. Um, I, 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 it, it smells different than I've ever smelt it before right now. Mm. Possibly, right than I. yes, possibly because of the... But it's, it, yeah, it has juniper, because juniper is supposed to refresh your memory. Mm. Um, and rosemary, likewise. Peppermint, just to make it all go away. You know? uh, frankincense, because that's quite meditational and uh, cleansing of the mind. Because, you know, I, I love all these things that... Um, Naturals do, mm. and then we put hydroxy citronella because it smells like a nice fresh bar of soap. So it's like mm. bubbles, foam. What's the kind of stuff called? Lava, 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 lava. Yeah. Um, so that, how do you use it? How do you make sure that it doesn't overwhelm? You use that much. Is the answer to what you actually do with those things. But I've been putting the the Yakima peppermint in everything I can sneak it into. Mm. And, talking about citruses as we were, we've got that um, bergamot mint, but you can sneak tiny bits of peppermint into citrus blends, you can sneak tiny little bits of uh, lavender into citrus blends, even smaller amounts mm -hmm. of rosemary. Um, so I, I brought... I brought, I brought other other herbs that I think go really well with mint, but I also brought a synthetic. Now I don't use menthol in fragrances. You can. Now, you can get menthol crystals, and but they're mostly used in cosmetics. They exist in perfumery, but they're um, mostly for what? What? What is menthol? Is that is that one of the things that is a component of? M mint. Yes, that fresh minty taste. It's the it's the uh, one of the menthol by itself as an isolate or a synthetic is. I mean, if you smelt it, it's it, it's the thing that you get when you take the lid off the toothpaste. Yeah. It so it is an individual chemical. Right. And um, it's an oil. So it must be an alcohol technically. I think. Yeah. Oh, so this. It's something different. It really reminds me of. Um, it is a mint. A very, very specific thing that no one will understand. Tell. No, oh, you, it won't. Tell. I mean, no, it was. I just had this like. I don't know if they even make it anymore, but there used to be this sort of gum stuff that you could get at science museums that you'd then put a straw into. And the gum, you'd be able to blow it up into big bubbles and make like shapes, yes. make like little animals out of it. And I stuff. had some of that. I think lots of people will. Do you, yeah. I don't know if I'm just. Yeah. No, it was. It smells great. like that. I think it. And then it sort of got banned, and then it came back because I think people weren't sure if it ought to be banned or not. You sort of stuck it around the end of the straw yes, and then the blew straw, it. And then blew a just, bubble, and then you could keep the bubble for a few. Then eventually. You could pinch it. it. Went, yeah, and you could pinch it, and then you could make other ones and stick them and on yes. it. And, and and it came in red and green and blue, I think. Yeah. I had that. I had that. Yeah. Anything you get at the Science Museum shop, yeah. I had. Okay, so what... I'm going to say something even weirder about this. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that this is like... You smell it, then it runs away. It smells like... It, it seems to instantly go off. Like you've sort of turned the vol volume down. It's like if somebody walks into the room and, and, yeah. and, and you instantly turn the volume down so you can... It's, it feels as like if it's gone... And off into the distance. Yeah. But it feels quite earthy to me mm. as well. And it's called Fresco Mint and it's a base. Wow. What I haven't done yet is experimented to see how it lasts and works. But. It smells so sort of strangely plasticky to me. Yeah. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Oh no. No, because soon when all the plastic's gone, we'll be, you know, <laughs> reminiscing about yeah. the days when things smell like plastic. <laughs> um, when everything's made out of mushrooms. Yeah. Yes. So, but that, that exists. That's what I meant. It's great. Um, Interesting. So what, I mean, what, what do you do with it, I think, is, is a, another question. And do you need mint at all? Um, 
in perfumery. Because quite often, you, you know, you want it in your fresh minty shower gels and you want it in your fresh minty toothpaste, but you might not. I mean, Gil now have done a good mint. Is that there somewhere? I think it's called. I suppose it's probably got that in it. Uh, a girl that like, quite allegoria or something like. When you said it's probably got well, that in it, which one did you point Oh, the out? fresco mint. Oh, right, yeah. It's probably got the most recent one in. Um, because the aqua allegoria has used some good synthetics. But this is my first um, big mint use. Hmm. One of the most exhilarating top notes mm. in recent history. Whether it was Louis uh, Couture instead. Yeah. What I did on my holidays. I feel like what I did on my holidays is you know that you're grown up when you start to love it. <laughs> you know, I remember when I first smelt it six years ago. I thought, oh, it's okay. And now I smell it and think it's a masterpiece. And I think that means I've grown up. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think I mean that in the in the best possible in the in the best possible way, sort of like. And I made it in my very remarkable. early days. I remember being told by someone who has his own perfume brand, and uh, we are led to um, believe that he makes all the perfumes. It's not the usual one. Uh, somebody else, but um, I met him at a an event at Les Santeurs when they still sold this and, um, and they, they somehow all got this thing, it was that time when everybody was saying oh but you've got to follow the regulations you know and I was saying yeah I know because the, this rumour had spread that I was n not, yeah. um, they got the wrong person but um, and he said well you know you can't really make your own perfume unless you go to perfume school you know that um, if you use vanillin, it always goes brown. And I haven't forgotten that because I happen to know that if you use vanillin, it doesn't always go brown. Mm -hmm. Depends what you use it with. Mm -hmm. And here is case in point, uh, there's a lot of vanillin in what I did on my holidays. I think min min mint, mint and vanilla go beautifully together. Mm. And that also, is not, they taste like a sweet we used to get when I was a kid. Mint and ethyl vanillin as well. And maybe a little bit of ethyl mortal. So what kind of mint is in that? Is in what I did in my holidays? Um, I use spearmint and peppermint in there. Oh right, wow. The both. And and there's also some, some lavender in there. Really? So mint and lavender together. Excellent headache cure. I but I but never write that on the bottle. But it's... um. Yeah, uh, the two together, I wanted really to make a kind of pint or a, a pavender. Um, Mavender. 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 Lint? Lint. Lint, not pint. Peppermint, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pavender. Um, ma yeah. Um, I wanted to make the difference between the two. This one, okay, now, now, this one's a. 100% strength, so the others were all diluted in ethanol to 10%, so mm -hmm. this is a bit not quite as close to the nose. Mm -hmm. So this is Peppermint Arvensis, which I got because my Kazakh clients uh, wanted it in something. Um, I can't remember if we actually ended up using it because of... What, I mean, you still have to be careful what's in these things. I would have to look it up and check the safety data sheet, but it's another one, it exists. And that my vent says. <laughs> We've both just gone completely silent, smelling it. <laughs> we, we, we just mean, yeah, we just don't mean it all we can I've just all we've got. I just completely zoned out smelling that then. Yeah. I, I forgot that we were doing, that we what we were doing. I just suddenly remembered, oh my goodness, all we can hear is drilling in the background, <laughs> yeah. actually filming, and somebody, it's like, it's just, I'm not going to watch that, they're just sitting there. Wow, yeah. that was into a drill. Yeah, it's like but, when yeah. Sean Keaveney does like 30 seconds of radio silence on 6 Music, BBC Radio 6 Music. Right, and everything, so my radio is broken. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so there's only the drilling and there's mild wafting. So. For now. 
It's, um, yeah. Temporary. It's so good. I think the others at 10%, at 100% strength would do the same. But then, yeah. you can, yes, it's, it, you can see why this has actually been used as medicine, in fact, for years and years and years. That's what, that's what peppermints are. I mean, they're, peppermints, they're not just sweeties. Wow. They stopped drilling, they've started And now they're, now they're clubbing someone like to death. giant steps. Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, this, to, to me, this proves that humans and animals, animals in general, are affected by everything around us. Because this, I, I, I don't know, what, it's probably because it's at 100% strength, or that I'm just in the right mood, but when I smell this, it's more than just a smell. It actually, it gives me, it makes me feel happy. It sort of like gives me a slight euphoric feeling when I, when I really whack it up my nose. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Which is why I really, I'm, I'm pleased, with, as we know, I, I never got, you know, in the lush labs. But it was so nice having a background, understanding that they incorporated uh, uh, naturals into their product for reasons of, you know, what they do, not just what they smell like. Yeah. Um, so I, I sort of came to the whole thing with that background of it, it's not just a smell. I love using my synthetics, yeah. but, you know, drag me away from my naturals kicking and screaming. Um, other things to use mint with, what does it go with? I thought that's, that'd be quite handy. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, lavender, good. Yeah. Um, vanilla, yes. This is, okay, here's the thing. We've smelled this before, but not today, and it's completely out of context, so. <sighs> not a clue. This is the Givaudan green tea oh, right, yeah. um, recreation. So, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, the green teas you've got at 1% strength. Wow. It is, you know, and like we were saying in the, the Harry and Brooke film. Yeah. Harry said, didn't like it. And, and you just got to get it down to the point at which it's gorgeous. It's quite apple with this. It's really nice. Yeah. You're fruity. It's, it's, I don't think it smells of green tea. But no. its name is Green Tea Jifko, and I think people approach it thinking, well, that doesn't smell like green tea, I don't think I want it. It's like, no, but all the, all the other things it smells of. Yeah. And the way it kind of goes with it and spearmint, it, it goes a lot softer. I don't know why I put and, my spearmint. Oh, mine's, mine's second. I, you see how labelled mine? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Oh I yes, mean, we, so it does. We dipped those a while ago, but it it, it softens. It, it itself is quite intense, but I, I think using it for its green leafiness... Um, yeah, it completely changes it. With the eucalyptus. But, yeah, it's just a thought. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at sort of other green things at the moment that go with it. I mean, I'm, I've made a cherry mint. One of the versions of Cherry Who yeah. was, was with peppermint. That's right, yeah. With my complete obsession with peppermint. Because somebody asked if I'd do it. I said, yeah. Um, and rose mint. Uh, Diabolo Mont, which is around here somewhere, made by uh, the, the Parfum de Rosine. Gorgeous thing. Diabolo no. Rose, sorry, Diabolo Rose. Um, yes. And there's a vi Violet Mont uh, by... Jack, somebody. I'm going. I'm going to give you this. I'll tell you why I can't think anymore because I've just I've been smelling this, <laughs> and um, you can smell it, and then I'll tell you why. I know I won't get my brain back for a couple of days. I'm careful. I'm not careful. So, wow. Okay, so it's not mint. Lavender. And it's not lavender. Is it not? Yeah. It's is. Oh wait. Worm, wor Rosemary. Wormwood. It's, this wormwood. is Artemisia absentium. This is absinthe. Essential oil. Wow. So, like, um, do not swallow this. This is. Uh, oh, this goes, there goes a green fairy. Yeah. Uh, but yes, greenness. This. 
this this gives floral and herbal things a kind of um, aldehydic shiny top note mm. but again tiny tiny it's really 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 nice well that's something else you can put oh actually this one's called artemisia oh, oh. Yeah, smells very good artemisia with... I've sent you. white ice wormwood okay it's a particular one it smells very good with um sorry spearmint yeah it also smells great with midnight smooches <laughs> everything smells great with midnight smooches <laughs> That's the, that would be the strap line. Yeah. So, yeah, there are lots of Artemisias. Even Divana, the fruity one, is an yeah. Artemisia. What um, does it mean? Oh, well, it's, I suppose it's... Ar Ar Artemis was the goddess of Greek goddess of hunting, wasn't she? So I guess it's named after that, but I don't know what it means exactly. It's a lovely name, isn't it, Artemis? Yeah. No, something maybe maybe she wore it when she hunted. Um, but what else have I got? I bought thyme. I did bring the uh, the rosemary as well. I bought dill. Now I had to get dill for somebody who really wanted a dill room fragrance because that's it's very restricted for perfumery use because it's got things in you just don't want on your skin. But, but you do want it all over your fish. You do want it on your fish, which is why when people say, oh, I'd only ever use things on my skin that I can eat. Like, oh, no. <laughs> you yeah. can eat a lot of things because, you know, your stomach's basically full of acid and deals with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can eat that you really wouldn't want to put on your skin. Really not. Wow. That is... Um... <laughs> that's dill. That's it, definitely it's dill. Really, you, just, <laughs> yeah. you picture smoked salmon bagels. Yeah, you? Or yeah. Lox. Wow. But yeah, so that, it, it exists. Dill essential oil. And that's down to 5% strength. These others, most of them have been at 10. And then just for fun, I think. I mean, what, what I would what I would probably do next if I if we were going to see what should we put with what, mm. and this is there's been a little bit of a controversy about drops. There's always always a controversy. If somebody starts putting a drop of something, a drop of something else, and measuring it, there's always a huge argument on a website. This is the spearmint. I'm going to put it with lemon myrtle. Um, because drops are all different sizes. You know, yeah. the, the drop from this bottle would have been a different weight from that one. But if you just want to do a tiny experiment, you can stick it on a piece of paper, wait yeah. for it to dry, and then see if that works. Yeah, yeah. You know, just let's not waste all the material. But if you're then going to do a proper experiment, this scale goes to two decimal places, so um, you know, centigrams, and a, a drop can be anything between like one and five, usually centigrams. So, okay, lemon myrtle spearmint combo. Oh. Which is it's quite nice. Lemon myrtle is lovely, quite restricted. Yeah. All the myrtles seem to be a bit restricted. But what I'm finding is that people will take you know, a tiny bottle and put it on a scale and try, press tear, they'll put one drop in and go, okay, that, oh, that hasn't measured. I'm going to need a more precise scale. Thank you. No, you're going to need more drops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, if somebody's doing, they bought a scale that goes to three decimal places, so they only have to use one drop of something. They're just never, ever going to be able to recreate it as... In fact, I'm going to see how many drops make 0.1 grams. This is quite accurate. Thinking about it, uh, 
Um, is that 25? Nah, nah, that's, yeah, and I've still got, it's not, it's still not, it's not, it's not happy. What I need, to, so I can put this back because there's not been anything else in that bottle. I just, it's just not sure whether there's anything there or not. Hmm. So I'm going to go, and that, well, it measured 0.25. Right. So it's like these drops were 0.01 One. each. So if I just go squirt, boom, 0.56. Now, it could, might be 0.561 or 0.562. With that amount, it, it's, it's just... It's going to be so inaccurate anyway, because as we're watching it, it's just going to evaporate. Uh -huh. yeah. So, I mean, there, there, I would say if somebody is thinking, oh no, I've got to have a tiny, tiny scale so I can measure tiny, tiny amounts. I need milligrams. Mm -hmm. You don't unless you're actually measuring diamonds and the value is that important. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you scale up, um, you'll find that you've lost accuracy, you won't be able to recreate what you want. So, if you're going to do, you, you do an experiment on this one drop at a time, mm -hmm. you get an impression of how it's going to work. And, but then, you have to recre recreate it and measure it. I suppose what, what this is on the disc is the sketch, mm -hmm. and then you've got to so actually do the painting. Yeah, and so that, it's easy little pencil drawing. Yeah, and then you do and the detail. Get a general idea, and then, then you go for it. But I yeah. I would not probably do less than, I wouldn't even aim for 0 0.1, I'd go for 1 gram. And it's all very well for me to say, because I've got kit these days, but 1 gram. I thought the lemon myrtle actually took over a bit. It, it has entirely taken over, but... Um, yeah. So what I would... Doesn't mean it's not lovely. True. But what I would probably do then is if I'm going to do my proper jean Carl method and everything, I would do two drops and then one. But then I would measure maybe... I wouldn't do one drop and two drops into the bottle because it wouldn't be accurate enough. I would then recreate the experiment and take it maybe to 0 0.5 of lemon myrtle, 0.5 grams and 1 gram of spearmint at 10% mm -hmm. strength so that I'd, it, it, it becomes more accurate because otherwise it's just not going to happen. So I would say do not spend your money on a scale that goes down to milligrams, spend it on a bit more kit, <laughs> spend it on bottles, do some use more stuff. Ah, so this is now a bit more minty, so it's two to one. But my next one on a piece of paper would probably be three to two. So, mm -hmm. working on a, a minty herbal top note that will, and I, this is genuine top note because they don't last very long, that's what a top note is, a thing that doesn't last very long. Um, and uh, just see that old school top note. Mmm. Lovely. I've got what I put in. That's lemon milk. Oh, I'll, give. I'll do two grams of spearmint, so I'll make it two to one. I mean, if I'm reproducing what I did on paper in drops and I'm scaling it up directly to grams, it won't be the same. No. No, it won't be because the drop sizes wouldn't be the same. But it'll give me an idea. Mm hmm. So that, that occurred. I need a cap. Find a cap. Give it a bit of a stir. See if that really matters. Maybe I've made a lemon myrtle spearmint accord that I might use again. Oh. Just once I've made something, I tend to want to do something with it. I don't like waste, do I? Okay, that one generally doesn't go in that long, I don't know. I'm not going to be put off. Oh, that's, so it's the... It, again, we could probably experiment for another hour and a half and probably we, what we need to do is just, like, fade out. <laughs> but, so you got mm. this. 
what would I do? That's the, that's the big question. What would I do to make it last longer? You'd add some um, some uh, I three super. <laughs> I probably would. Or um, Hedione. Yeah. Or what I have here today in my hand is Felix Fixer. Or Felix Fixer. Which is one of my fixative blends that I made. So I'm just going to stick in. Oh, nice colour. Mm. Um, we say I've made it go dark. The world. I see how much space I've got left. I put in one gram Felix Fixer, which is made from. What's Felix Fixer made? Labdanum, vanillin, ethylene brasilite. Uh, something I've forgotten. Felix. Felix, yes, named after my tango teacher in Havana. Great. Because he was smooth. Yeah. Yeah. That was 24 years ago I learnt to dance tango in Havana. Wow. You were six. Yes, I will have been, yes. Five, probably. All right, maybe. I find that. Wow. I know. Seems like dust yesterday. That, that, that Havana doesn't exist anymore. Actually, it's going to be whacking a, a, a Hilton on the, on the, on the beach You'd be soon. surprised. A lot of those things do still exist. Yeah. Um, okay, oh, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is now a mint lemon myrtle. I, I couldn't launch it. The lemon myrtle will tip it over the skin sensitizer list. So yeah. you have to play with this, but... It's very nice, that. It is quite, isn't it? It's very fresh. That's what you'd expect from Spearmental Lemon Myrtle. Yeah, wow. And this will, of course, last a lot longer than the Lemon Myrtle and Spearmint by themselves. But still, after a couple of hours, we'll probably just have Felix Pixar. That's something for a festival, that is. Mm -hmm. For the morning to make you feel like you've had a wash. Yes. You know I'm making it. Yes, that's why I okay. said it. <laughs> That's next year's secret project. Oh yeah, we'll, fa we'll have faded out before that. No, 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 we can tell. We can tell. <laughs> that's fine, it's not that secret. Yeah. No, that's happening. Maybe I'll have to make this one now. I think so. Call okay. it. Call it, it. Call it. Call it. Um, it. Call it. It takes two minutes to brush your teeth or half a second to spray this. No. I can't fit still, that on the label. You still need to brush your teeth. Okay. So I'll, I will, what I'll do is I will write down what was in it, which is yes. one gram lemon myrtle, two grams of spearmint, and one gram of Felix at 15%. The others were at 10 So I can then do the calculations and know exactly how much of the compounds were in there. And we can come back and smell that when we're all back from all the places that we're about to go to. And I'll put it with the midnight smooches. And then we'll go and write a brochure, shall we? Mm-hmm.